This is the Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. So what do you do when you're put on the spot? All of us have had that opportunity to have a question answered a situation where either a teacher or a situation where whether it was introducing ourselves or whether we literally had a client ask us a question we couldn't answer, whatever it was, it was immediate and we had no time to prepare. So how do we prepare for something you can't prepare for? That's what we're going to discuss today is we're going to discuss how to think faster and talk smarter. In fact, that is the title of the book uh, that our guest wrote. Uh, our guest is Matt Abrams, and that is his specialty is about speaking when we're at the spur of the moment, as opposed to when we have lots of time to prepare. It's hard enough to do it when we have time to prepare, but what do we do when we don't have time to prepare? Matt, it is great to have you on the Wealth Ability Show. And if you would uh, give us a little of your background and why you wrote this book. Tom, I'm thrilled to be here with you. And I am somebody who is passionate about communication. I teach strategic communication at Stanford's Graduate School of Business, where I've been for over 13 years. And I'm somebody who also writes books, hosts a podcast like yourself. It's called Think Fast, Talk Smart. And the whole purpose of this book is to help people feel more comfortable and confident speaking in the moment. And it arose out of my work at the business school. We learned about eight or nine years ago that our students were struggling answering questions in the moment. You probably remember back in school, the cold call where the professor said, what do you think? And you had to respond in our very bright very capable students who actually knew the answer were struggling to get the answer out. So I was asked to craft some content to help in these situations. And that's what resulted in the methodology that we teach our MBA students at Stanford. And we I am now hoping to bring to others to help them in the situations they find themselves in. Um, that That's awesome. So we all know people who are really good at just speaking spur, spur of the moment. I think maybe Ronald Reagan was best known for that. Um, uh, Donald Trump seems to have a knack for it. Um, and on the other hand, Donald Trump doesn't do well on a script. Um, Barack Obama did well on a script, but doesn't seem to do well spur of the moment. So first of all, let's talk about why are some people more naturally adaptable to speaking at the spur of the moment, whether it's introducing themselves in a group or uh, whether it's just they get they get called out, like you say, get called out in class. Well, so fundamentally, I think everybody can get better at speaking in the moment. I, I think all of us can improve and, and really hone that skill. The reality is some of us, for whatever reason, be it experience, as in my case, I got good at speaking in the moment simply because my last name starts with AB. I always went first in school and other situations. So you can build up uh, experience to help you feel more comfortable and confident. I think temperament being more extroverted helps. But the reality is everybody can get better at speaking in the moment. And it takes practice. It takes effort. But with that effort and practice come tremendous benefits. So, so why do you find this so important? I mean, this is something that clearly you're, I mean, you've written a book about it. You're, you're talking about it to your, your graduate students and their business students and our, our listeners are entrepreneurs. Why, why so important to be able to handle that in the moment question? Well, if you think about it, most of our communication is spontaneous. You know, we, we plan for presentations, we, we create pitches, we, have meetings with agendas, but most of our communication happens in the moment, especially for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who I coach and teach are always pitching, answering questions, giving and getting feedback, having to introduce themselves, making small talk. All of those are situations that require the ability to speak in the moment. So so what makes, um, when, when you see somebody who's particularly good at it, speaking in the moment, um, what is it you're looking at that tells you, wow, this person's really good at that? So being in the moment, being a good in the moment speaker requires a few things. One, that your responses are timely, that they are appropriate and relevant to the information that's being asked. If you're being asked to give feedback, introduce yourself, it's timely and appropriate. And it is structured in a way that is memorable, clear, and concise. 
Most of us, when we're put on the spot, simply rattle off information. We take people on a journey of discovery of what we're thinking in the moment as we're thinking it. And that's hard to parse as the recipient of that. It's hard to make sure that we, we understand it. Lists of information are not valuable. It's really hard for us to remember lists. In fact, Tom, I'm, uh, you don't have to answer this, but just think about it and your listeners can too. How many items do you need to buy at a grocery store before you actually have to write them down? Chances are it's not that many, four or five. We're not good at lists. We need to have structured, clear, concise information to be effective in virtual, in our spontaneous speaking. Uh, all right. So I'll bite. So what, wh what are some of those steps? What, what are the yeah. things that we need to do in the moment? Let, let's start with what do we need to do in the moment? And, and then we'll talk about what do we need to do to prepare to be in the moment? Yeah. So to, to get good at speaking in the moment, you really have to work on mindset and messaging. Mindset is what we do in advance. So happy to talk about that second. But in the moment when you have to respond, two things are critical message structure and focus. So I believe a structure is critical to effective communication. And to me, a structure is nothing more than a logical connection of ideas, a beginning, middle, and an end. Your audience is very familiar with one structure. Anybody who's ever pitched anything, sold anything, has used a structure called problem, solution, benefit. Here's some problem, issue, or challenge. Here's how we address it. That's our solution. And then ultimately, here's the benefit that you or others will have from it. That is one of many, many structures. I hope later I can share another one that I think is fantastic for pitching. Once you have that structure, it tells you where to start, how to end, how to bridge information in between. You then have to focus your content. Attention is the most precious commodity we have in the world today. Our attention is constantly being pulled in different directions. So we must focus our message so it's clear and concise. My mother has this saying, I know she didn't create it, but it's really powerful. Tell me the time, don't build me the clock. Many entrepreneurs are clock builders. They want to explain how they got to where they are or why they should be trusted or valued. People just want to know the time. So we have to be focused and you get focused by making sure your content is relevant and salient to the audience you're speaking to and that you have a clear goal for what you're saying. And to me, a goal has three parts, information, emotion, and action. What do you want your audience to know? How do you want them to feel? And what do you want them to do? So by focusing on relevance, by having a clear goal, you can actually have a message that's clear and concise. And if it's structured, it will be memorable. So those are the things that we do in the moment. And that's how it helps us to be effective in our communication. Okay, so, so let's take an example. Uh, you are in a new group. You come in new. All right. So recently I, I started in a master new mastermind group. Of course, okay. first thing they do call on you. Tell us about yourself. So let's take that example, because I think that's something everybody can relate to. Give us, you know, that example, what would be, you know, what, what's the info emotion, the action, how do you make it memorable, clear and concise? Yeah, excellent. And that's a that's a really, really great question because many of us are asked to introduce ourselves. So I have a very specific approach that I like to use when we have to introduce ourselves. First and foremost, I am not a big fan of saying, hi, my name is. I would rather people start with something that's very important or true for you and then say your name and what it is you do. So this is leveraging a structure that is called three questions, what, so what, now what? I think this is a great structure. It's like a Swiss army knife. You can use it for so many things. What is who you are, your idea, your product, your service, your feedback? So what is why is it important or relevant to your audience? And now what is what comes next? So when I introduce myself, I introduce myself by saying, I am somebody who's passionate about communication. I like to learn and develop my communication skills. My name is Matt Abrahams, and I look forward to us having a great conversation or taking a lot of power and tools away from this mastermind group. So by stating uh, us, by starting with a statement, you can say it in a way that is compelling, that is passionate, that has some emotion to it. If I just say, my name is Matt Abrahams, that's not interesting. That's not that engaging. Most people will forget it. But if I start with something that's really important to me and then say my name, 
people are interested, they're paying attention, and then I connect to what comes next. So what, so what, now what is a great way to introduce yourself, introduce your products, your services, to really get people understanding who you are and what you wish to do. So we're talking about a lot of things about how to do something that we can't, literally can't prepare for. So um, we can prepare perhaps to introduce ourselves. You've clearly prepared. Um, you, you've you've done this before. You've done that introduction before. Um, there are many times though that we don't get to prepare at all. I mean, it is truly spur of the moment. So so what do you do to develop that skill set to be able to handle those questions? Thank you. That is a a very, very important question. One of the counterintuitive notions in my book and in this work is that you can actually prepare to be spontaneous. And that sounds counterintuitive, but in fact, if you've ever played a sport, you understand it. You do a bunch of drills, you get your mindset right, and then when you're playing the game and things happen in a spontaneous manner, you're able through an agile set of pre-practiced skills to respond appropriately. So it comes down to mindset and mindset has four steps in my methodology. The first is you have to manage anxiety. Most people get very nervous speaking period, but especially in the moment. In fact, upwards of 85% of people report feeling nervous in high stakes situations. And quite frankly, I think the other 15% are lying. So we need to manage our anxiety. And I spent some time in the book and I'm happy to share with you and your listeners some techniques, but essentially it boils down to managing symptoms, what we physically and mentally experience and sources, things that initiate the, and exacerbate our anxiety. So we start by managing anxiety and that will help us tremendously. All right. So, so, so before you go on, yeah. I want to stop right there because I have a question for you. Yeah. So people ask me all the time. I've been, I've been speaking to large groups around the world for yep. uh, many, many years now. And people ask, how do you do that without being nervous? How do you, you know, how do you manage your anxiety? That's really what they're asking. And what I always tell them is it's not about me. It's about the audience. And if it's not about me, I can't be anxious about it because there's nothing for me to be anxious about. It's all about the audience. They're the ones who should be anxious because are they actually going to get they, are they actually going to get any value? So the only time I, I get I am challenged with this is when somebody asks me to introduce myself because all of a sudden it feels like this is about me. Mm -hmm. So. First, I think that is fantastic advice. And there's a lot of evidence that suggests when you make it about your audience, when you see yourself in service of your audience, it reduces stress. So I love that you do that. You can reframe an introduction as a way of helping your audience. So you, you can think about when I'm introducing myself, what I'm doing is helping my audience understand why I am somebody who can be of value to them. So make it about their learning about you rather than you're revealing information about yourself. And in so doing, hopefully it will continue that reduction in anxiety that you feel. But I love that you do that technique and it's a technique I recommend and academic research validates that putting the focus, the spotlight on your audience and the value they're going to take can reduce the pressure that we feel on ourselves. Well, I, I, I think our number one anxiety is um, looking bad. Our, our number one anxiety is what do people think of us, right? Um, to some extent, we're all approval whores, right? So <laughs> we'll do well, that. I think that's one of many sources of anxiety. Oh. Certainly, we want to be evaluated and judged well. We want to feel right. good about what we do. Many of us are made nervous because we want to do it right. We feel there's some right exactly. way to do it. In fact, there is no right way to communicate. There are better ways and worse ways. So there are many sources of anxiety and if we can find tools and techniques to help us manage those different sources, and sources are different for everybody, uh, then we can actually have our own way of feeling more comfortable and confident as it sounds like you've become in your communication. Okay, so managing anxiety is 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 the first, and we'll come back to it because I do I I think that's one that people get most anxious about. Yeah, uh, yeah, people are nervous about being nervous. That's for that, sure. Absolutely. So what's number two? So the second step in the process gets to what I just mentioned. We want to do it right. We want to say the perfect thing, answer the question in the right way, give the best feedback, have the most interesting small talk conversation. And by putting that amount of pressure on ourselves, we actually make it less likely that we will do well at all. Your, your mind is like a computer. 
and not a perfect analogy, but you only have so much bandwidth. You know, if you're on a laptop or on your phone and you have lots of windows or apps open, your system is performing less well because there's so much going on. The same is true with your brain. If I am focusing and thinking about and judging and evaluating everything I say, striving to do it perfectly, I actually have less cognitive bandwidth to do it well at all. So we need to dial down that perfectionistic tendency that we have and just focus our energy on getting it done. And in so doing, we free up resources to do it better. I'm certainly not saying we shouldn't judge and evaluate our communication, but we dial it down a little bit to help ourselves be more present and focused on what we're saying. In the world of improvisation, they have a saying, dare to be dull. Just get out what needs to get out. And in so doing, you actually free up a lot of resources to help you do it better. So second step is to strive for connection, not perfection. Third step is to see these circumstances as opportunities, not threats. Many of us, when we're put on the spot, feel we're being threatened, tested, challenged. And yet, these are great opportunities. Many of your entrepreneurial listeners will know that good things have happened when they are just in the moment having conversation. They get access to opportunities. They learn about potential uh, downfalls of other people's products. They get connections that might help them in the future. So these spontaneous speaking situations actually drive benefit. And then the fourth of these initial mindset steps is critically important, which is to listen well. I coach and teach a tremendous number of entrepreneurs. I mean, thousands of them. And the key thing I say, the two bits of advice, be in service of your audience and listen. Those are critical skills to help you do better at what you do. So those are the first four steps. Manage anxiety, get out of your own way. In other words, connection over perfection. See these circumstances as opportunities and then listen deeply and in a present-oriented way. And when you do that, you prepare yourself just like an athlete does drills to be better in the moment. I like it. So I'm, I, I, I promised we would go back to um, anxiety, so the, managing the anxiety. So you said that you had some uh, ways, some steps to actually help manage that anxiety. Can, would you mind walking through some of those for us? I would love to. Thank you for the opportunity. There are primarily two ways to manage anxiety uh, around speaking. We deal with symptoms and sources. Symptoms are what we physiologically experience. So when you get nervous, Tom, what happens for you? Well, I'll share with me. I turn red and I perspire. What happens for you? Uh, 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 my hands get clammy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I call it plumbing reversal. Uh, for most people, <laughs> their mouth gets dry, but their palms right. get- Mouth, so mouth dry, hands clammy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very, very, very common. This is your body responding to fight or flight. When we are in the moment speaking or planning to speak, we uh, feel it as a threat and our body does everything that it would normally do during fight or flight. So we can calm that down. First and best thing to do is to take deep belly breaths, the kind you would do if you've ever done yoga or Tai Chi, where you really fill your lower abdomen. Number one, critical to do. Make sure your exhale is longer than your inhale. That will help you as well. Second, for those of us who get sweaty palms, that's because our, or, or sweaty brows, our core body temperature is going up. Your heart is beating faster. Your body is tensing. Your blood pressure goes up. It's as if you had uh, exercised. Because when we exercise, we get sweaty and we turn red. We need to cool ourselves down. Holding something cold in the palm of your hand will cool your body down. The palms of your hand, just like your forehead and the back of your neck, are thermoregulators for your body. On a cold morning, if you've ever held a warm cup of tea or coffee and help, felt it warm you up, we're just doing the same thing in reverse. And there's several hacks and tools that we can use to manage our symptoms. Those are just two. We have to also think about sources, the things that initiate or exacerbate our anxiety. And one thing that gets uh, makes us very nervous is the goal that we're trying to achieve. Entrepreneurs want people to partner with them, want to get funding. These are all goals. A goal is a, a future desired state. What makes us nervous is we won't achieve that. So I'm nervous that this VC I'm pitching to isn't going to fund me. That's a potential negative future outcome. So to manage that, I have to be present oriented because by definition, if I'm in the present moment, I'm not worried about the future. Lots of things to help us be present oriented. 
I can engage in some small talk to connect, to bring me in the present moment. Before we started recording this, you and I did some brief small talk. I can do something physical, walk around the building, do some light exercise, gets me in my body in the present moment. Start at 100 and count backwards by a challenging number like 17s. That gets you in the present moment. So there are symptoms and sources we can manage. The book is all about it. My previous book, my first book was called Speaking Up Without Freaking Out, 50 Academically Verified Techniques for Managing Anxiety. We can do things to feel more comfortable and confident when we speak, and we should. So it, it's interesting. Um, we had uh, the sleep doctor, Dr. Bruce, um, on our show a while back. And some of these things you're talking about is, are actually some of the things he talks about what to do if you wake up in the middle of the night, which is really interesting. Like counting back, says count down from 300 by threes. Yeah. Says, you know, because what you're doing is you're just like you say, you're being in the moment, being present. I love your I I, I love the way you started this. You said um, you're speaking in the moment. You didn't say you're speaking extemporaneously or spontaneous or anything like that. You said in the moment, which implies what well, you're just being present in the moment. And it sounds to me like a lot of what we can think about when, from a mindset standpoint is simply to be present in the moment. Is that fair? Absolutely. When you're in the moment, you can respond to things as they need to be responded to. If your mind is in the future, thinking about the consequences, it makes it very distracting and it's hard to really respond to what's needed. Similarly, a lot of us ruminate, and this is a big problem. I don't know if you're familiar with Mike Krzyzewski, former basketball coach, Coach K. Yeah. Um, he, he had this mantra that was so important for his players. And in fact, it's permeated most of sport. And it's this notion of next play. So if you are an athlete and something goes well or something goes wrong, your immediate mindset should be next play. Get back in position, do what you need to do for the next play. Many of us in our communication, just like in sports, when something doesn't go well, we ruminate on the spot. We're like, oh, that was a bad answer. I could have done it this way, or I should have said this when I was giving that feedback. And what that does is that locks us into the past and we miss what's happening in the present. So being present oriented is really, really important to be agile in these spontaneous speaking situations. That's so interesting. All right, so um, let's give our listeners, if we could, we've got a few minutes left, uh, maybe uh, three things that you think are the three most important things we can do that we can practice. Um, because I totally agree, practice is really, but you have to practice the right way, right? You have to practice the right things. It's perfect practice makes perfect, not, not, not practice makes perfect. So what are... If, if you can give us three things that you would practice, and these are the things, because I can't seriously, I, I'm, I'm an accountant, but I seriously can't count beyond three. That's <laughs> what I, I can remember three. And I think most people can remember, remember three things. So give us the three things that you would have us practice. Yes, absolutely. So first and foremost, we need to practice listening. So listen to Tom's podcast, listen to my podcast, Think Fast, Talk Smart, listen to the podcast and listen for the details. So here I'm going to combine two bits of advice in one. Listen intently and then stop listening. It could be a, a podcast, a, a show, it could be something you read, it could be a meeting that you're in and immediately afterwards. Listen intently and then ask yourself, what was it about? Why is it important to me? And what can I do with that information? In other words, you're drilling, listening, and what, so what, now what? And in so doing, you're training yourself to be able to really listen intently and then respond in a structure. And that will help you tremendously. It's like an athlete who sets up, let's take basketball, for example, sets up on the, the free throw line and takes a free throw shot, gets their mindset ready, takes a free throw shot. So in the game, when they have to take that shot, they're ready to go. Listen, why is this, what is the, the key point? Why is it important to me? What can I do next? What, so what, now what? Those are the first two things that will really help you. The third thing to practice is to actually record yourself speaking. It could be anything. You could just talk about what you're doing in your day. It could be explaining something that's coming up. Just record yourself and watch it. Not just watching it, but also listen to it. So watch it in two different ways. Watch video only and then listen audio only and begin to hear what you sound like. Begin to see what you look like. In doing that, you will begin to change your nonverbal presence as well because it's important what you say, but how you say it is also very important. So by practicing listening, 
practicing structure, practicing your nonverbal presence, how you come off saying what you say, those three things alone will make all entrepreneurs better and everybody better in their communication. So basically, similar to what you would do if you're trying to improve your golf swing, you're going to you 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 record it, you're going to watch it, you're, you're going to pay attention to it. And you know, what, what, can, what am I doing and what could be different? Exactly. Yes, exactly. And, and yes, anything that people have trained for a sport, playing a musical instrument, whatever, those same skills translate beautifully to communication. Well, I love this. These are these are amazing real real life techniques. I I love how practical you've brought us, um, Matt, in this um, how to do this uh, contemporaneous speaking or in the moment uh, speaking when we get particularly when we're getting asked a question, which I think is the um, is the toughest one, right? Um, asking a question that is not about not about our regular skill set. Um, if it's about our skill set, we should be able to answer those pretty easily. But it's the rest of the time I think we get in trouble. And communication, of course, every everyone we know is the single most important skill in business. It is uh, nothing. I don't think anything else is even close to being as important as communication. And as Matt says. We communicate in the moment more often than we communicate any other way. So, Matt, any final words, um, and uh, and then tell us where to find out more about you and your book. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to chat with you. I enjoyed it very much. My final words are this: as you said, communication is critical to our success in our personal and professional lives. We can hone and develop our communication. Take the time to work on your planned communication as well as your in-the-moment communication. You do that by three things, repetition, reflection, and feedback. If I can help along the journey, I'm happy to do so. You can find a lot of information and resources at mattabrahams.com. I encourage you to listen in to Think Fast, Talk Smart, the podcast. It's all about communication, 20-minute bite-sized episodes. And I'm a big user of LinkedIn, so connect and follow me there. Thanks so much, Tom. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Matt. And just remember, uh, when we get really good at communicating, particularly that 80, 90% of the time when we're not, we're not able to prepare precisely for that communication, what we're going to end up with always is way more money and way less tax. We'll see y'all next time. You've been listening to The Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.